Hey folks, I think it's safe to say that the period of time between 2006 till Ryzen's launch in 2017 will probably be best remembered as the decade of quad-core dominance. I mean, the fact that we're even getting people asking today, is a 8700K a worthwhile upgrade from a 2600K, and that question, still being relevant, kind of just shows the perception that four cores are all you'd ever need. Now, that's great for those of us who bought into the quad-core ethos early on, but utilisation of more than four cores, it was always a bit of a problem, with developers instead optimising their games for a strong single thread, rather than spread that load evenly across many cores. AMD's Ryzen aimed to change that mindset, and it looks like it might finally be succeeding. Intel responded in turn with a line of hexa-core CPUs with Coffee Lake, and AMD's mainstream Ryzen 5 series now come in 8 and 12 thread varieties, at a pretty amazing price, while the Ryzen 7 line features 8 cores and 16 threads. So does that mean developers are finally starting to take note of these multiple threaded CPUs and optimise their games to take advantage of more than 4 cores? Well, I've got 4 Ryzen processors lined up today, which at the time of writing at least, represent samples across the whole of the AM4 lineup. And we're going to be running through Far Cry 5 using both the integrated benchmarking tool and run through the gameplay in general. The graphics card which we're going to be using for this test is the MSI RX 580 8GB Gaming X, which by all accounts is a mid-range card, with a maximum core clock speed of 1380MHz and the VRAM is sitting at 2GHz, giving us an effective speed of 8GHz. For the CPUs at the bottom of the pecking order, we're using the Ryzen 3 1200, it's a 4 core, 4 thread processor with no frills and a pocket money price tag. Moving up to the lower end of the Ryzen 5 family, we've got the R5 1400, a quad core again, but this time with SMT, simultaneous multi threading and AMD's response to Intel's hyper threading. So while it still has 4 physical cores, we do have 8 threads to work with. At the upper end of the R5 line we've got a 1600, a hexa-core with SMT giving 12 threads in total, and it's a CPU that's proven to be one of the most popular options in the Ryzen lineup, being an affordable little monster in productivity. Finally, at the top end we've got the Ryzen 7 1700. Now, this was the cheapest 8-core 16-thread CPU in the Ryzen 7 lineup, but it did offer great value, and it's actually the CPU that I've been using in my main work and editing rig since Ryzen's launch. To try and eliminate as much variance as possible, I've also clocked and locked all four CPUs to 3.5GHz across all cores, and the system is using a generous bounty of 24GB of memory, clocking in at 3GHz. So let's jump in with the Ryzen 7 1700. Now, the resolution, as you will have noticed, is 21 by 9 That's simply because the game is rendering to a 2560 by 1080 ultra-wide FreeSync display. For those of you playing in a 1920 by 1080 16 9 monitor, the ultra wide has around 33% more pixels, so you will actually see higher frame rates than the frame rates that I'm displaying here on a traditional 16 by 9 1080p monitor. The results on 16 threads were a max of 72 FPS, minimum of 52, and an average of 58. This is on the ultra preset with TAA enabled. CPU utilization on the Ryzen 7 1700 averaged out 23.8% over the benchmark run, seeing a maximum of 36. Moving down to the Ryzen 5, and both the Ryzen 5 1400 and the 1600 returned, well, exactly the same results in the benchmark, around 72 FPS on average, minimums just over 50 FPS, and an average just a smidge under 60 FPS, again at 58. Just like the Ryzen 7 1700, we see a good spread of utilisation across all the available threads, with the Ryzen 5 1600 and its 12 threads appearing to be used a tad more effectively than the Ryzen 7 with 16 threads. Utilisation in the Ryzen 5 1400 was also impressive with a pretty even spread across all 8 threads. Average utilisation over multiple benchmark runs seen the 1600 return an average CPU utilisation of 31.4% with the max being 41, and the Ryzen 5 1400 returned an average CPU utilisation percentage of 46.2, with the maximum CPU utilisation being 60%. Moving on to the little quad core, the Ryzen 3 1200, and it returned, probably unsurprisingly at this point, 71 FPS on max, 52 in the minimums, and an average of 58, a common theme. On an interesting point, during the testing, I did notice that the Ryzen 3 1200 actually managed to keep the GPU fed at 100% through the whole benchmark. That said, with a lower thread count, it does come with higher CPU utilisation to get the same result. And there were instances of the benchmark where the 1200 did hit 100% capacity, although over a few benchmark runs the average percentage of CPU usage was just under 80%. So with the performance pretty much identical using the in-game benchmark, I then decided to jump into the game. First off, comparing the Ryzen 3 and the Ryzen 7. 
and two things stood out. Firstly, performance in both were pretty similar, down to the margin of error stuff, and secondly, the CAN benchmark is surprisingly accurate as a representation of actual in-game performance. Using either CPU, the average frame rate hovered around 60 FPS with the 1% lows over a 10 minute or so test, staying in the low 50s, so I think it's pretty safe to assume that using any of the Ryzen 5 CPUs it would achieve similar results. So summing this little test up, and I'll be perfectly honest with you, I was expecting a little bit more deviation between the processors, but at the same time I'm quite glad with the findings. Sure, at a glance it would be tremendously easy to shout that Quad is still king, developers are not taking advantage of multi-core and throw up the usual red flags that we've been waving for the last half a decade or so, but that's really not the case. Yes, taking this test in isolation alone, we can say that Far Cry 5 performs as well using an RX 580 with a quad core as it does on an octa core with 16 threads. But that's down to the developers actually optimising for the hardware that people have. I mean, it still makes sense to target four cores as a baseline when you think about how much i5s and now i3s are in the wild with four cores. The fact that even with the lowest Ryzen 3 processor, we still get 100% GPU utilisation with an 8GB RX 580 shows that developers want you to be able to play Far Cry 5 in Full HD with all the bells and whistles turned on in a mid-range system. That said, while frame rates were consistent over all four CPUs, it doesn't take a second glance to see that we're approaching the limit of a quad core's usefulness clock for clock. Around 80% use on average on what, well, should be a $200 graphics card, shows that at the low to mid range, a quad core CPU will suffice, just. But if you go for a GPU that's slightly more potent or you're aiming for higher refresh rates, then a 4 thread CPU maybe is going to start to hold you back or force you into overclocking to eke out that extra headroom in the future. But really that's to be expected, AMD had it right with the Ryzen 3 last year, 4 cores should have been available for £100, $100 or less a long long time ago, but now hopefully, with Intel themselves even admitting that more cores are actually more useful, we're going to start seeing these higher thread count CPUs being utilised a lot more effectively down the line. And that's a great thing for anyone who's already bought into a high thread CPU. Far Cry 5 does make use of all the threads on offer, with its load nicely distributed across the spread of threads, 23.8% CPU usage, under a quarter of your CPU being used, that's a lot of headroom to tackle more demanding games in the future. And as developers start creating games based around these higher thread count CPUs, we're going to see a gap in performance between high count and low count processors. But I'll stop rambling there, if you've got an older i5, a Ryzen 3 or a similar spec processor, Far Cry 5 is going to run silky smooth for the most part, with something at the level of an RX 480, 580 or GTX 1060. If you've got something a little less powerful, then you've got to have no issue whatsoever maxing out your GPU usage on any recent and decent quad-core CPU. In saying that though, I'd love to hear from any Pentium, i3 or older Intel owners to know how their CPUs are holding up and what graphics cards are pairing with, so be sure to let me know down in the comments section and don't forget to share this video around. For now though, I'm going to be going back into Hope County, so I'll see you all in the comments section down below and in the next video.